everyone. Welcome to the video on introduction to acids and bases. So we're going to talk about um, a few definitions of acids and bases. One's the Arrhenius theory. Then we're going to look at the Bronsted-Lowry theory as well and just introduce to you what it, what's an acid and what's a base. So the earliest definition was given by Arrhenius and he said that acids contain a hydrogen atom and they must and they dissolve in water to form H plus. Okay, H plus is also called a proton. Okay, so this um, here. Okay, um, this is a very limited definition um, for a couple of reasons, but one of the main reasons is that it says the acid has to be in water. Okay, and we know that that's not the case. So acids can react with um, lots of other um, compounds and lots of other bases. So um, this was a very, very limited view. And then um, his base definition said that a base is going to contain hydroxides. Remember, this is one of our polyatomic ions that has a negative charge and when it dissolves in water. So once again, a very limited view because this is only an aqueous solution. But nonetheless, acid, think of it as H plus or proton and base as hydroxide. Okay, and so here we have HCl, hydrochloric acid, and NaOH, sodium hydroxide, as a base. All right, so it did predict the behavior of acids bases correctly, but it's very limited. So we already talked about that. Um, and another thing um, that is not shown is typically if you have H plus, a hy hydrogen ion, this was what we call the proton, okay, in solution. If it's in solution with water, then these are going to combine the water and the H plus and become hydronium. So often you'll see H plus and H3O plus hydronium. Okay, that's what's actually present in aqueous solu solution, but you'll see these two interchange. So H plus or hydronium concentration, but this is a staple for an acid. A more widely used definition is called the Bronsted-Lowry definition. And it says that the acid is a proton donor. Okay, so it gives up a proton, which has a positive charge, and a base is a proton acceptor. Okay, so it, it, it keeps or it takes that proton. Okay, notice that this doesn't talk about the being in water or anything like that because um, it's not limited by, by only being aqueous. All right, so same look here. Okay, so HCl, um, this is the acidic proton or hydrogen, and it is donated to a base. And you'll see that water can actually act as an acid or a base, okay, and in this situation, because we have a strong acid here, um, the base is going, or the water is going to act as a base. Okay, so HCl is the Bronsted-Lowry acid, and water is the base, okay, so it accepts the proton. So if it gives up a proton, then what's left behind, a proton is H+, plus. so if you lose positive charge, it becomes chloride. Okay, if water is the base and it is a proton acceptor, then it becomes H3O+. Okay, so if the proton is a donor, it donated a proton, okay, and so it becomes chloride, and then that proton that was accepted by the base is now H3O+. And because it has a positive charge, Okay, where it's neutral here, so it becomes negative. And then because it gained a positive charge, it becomes positive here. All right, 
for the Bronsted Lowry definition, and this video we're only going to cover this, and there's actually a um, more inclusive theory that um, I use the most in class, especially in organic chemistry, but we're not go going to go into detail in this video, but it's the Lewis theory, and it actually encompasses all acids and bases, okay? But this definition is still limited, but it's um, accepted and it covers most acids and bases. So the Lowry acid still says that, the definition still says it must contain a hydrogen atom, okay? And so if you look here, we have HCl, HBr, Okay, these are acids that are, it would be good to start writing down, recognizing these. They're in your book. They're um, anywhere, really. Sulfuric acid, acetic acid. So these five, these are very common acids that you will see. And we'll talk about strength of these and, and things like that later. Notice that the acidic hydrogen, so this is the one that's going to be lost, right? Because acids are proton donors. Okay, notice that it's the one that is bonded to the oxygen, it's not these CH hydrogens here. Okay, so we have hydrochloric, hydrobromic acid, nitric, sulfuric, and acetic. So five very common acids. How these are named, um, just go review this really quickly, is that we've learned that when we name um, our nonmetals or even our ionic or covalent compounds, we end in IDE. Well, for acids, you just replace that IDE with IC acid. So that's where you get chloric acid. And then the, the hydrogen is replaced with hydro. So you say hydrochloric acid. Okay, polyatomic anions are also involved in names of acids, and they typically end in ATE or ITE. And so, same idea, the ATE is dropped, and when it's an acid, it becomes, instead of sulfate, it becomes sulfuric acid. Okay. This polyatomic ion here is sulfite, and so it, the ending is dropped and it becomes sulfurous acid. All right, a few definition type things here. If you have a monoprotic acid, that just means that it has one acidic proton, so that's like HCl. Okay, but there are acids that have two hydrogens, so it has the potential to donate two protons, two hydrogens, so these are diprotic. Okay, this is phosphoric acid. It has three hydrogens, so it's a triprotic acid. So it means it just has more than, has three acidic protons. Okay, and notice acids can be neutral, like HCl, uh, positive, like hydronium, H3O+. That, that really right here, that is the definition that we've seen sort of of an acid. It's H plus concentration or hydronium concentration. And even here, we still have a proton, even though this is negative. So this can also be an acid. So acids can be neutral, positive, or negative. All right, as for bases. So bases are proton acceptors. So they have to have a lone pair of electrons that can be used to form a new bond to the proton. Okay, so we're forming a new bond. So if we think about it, the hydrogen, so here, this is our lone pair. This is going to be our base. Okay, we form a new bond at this site where these lone pairs are. And so if you think about it, a pro, this is going to be our acid. Okay, remember water can act as an acid or a base. And this, so if this one, if the water is the acid, then this must be the base and it donates a proton and it makes a bond. So if it donates one, we make a bond, we get NH4 plus, and now because this was neutral and it lost a hydrogen, you're left with hydroxide, okay, which is basic and that's what we would expect.
Okay, so there are some common bases, and these here are neutral. Okay, neutral bases are actually weaker than ones that have negative charge, and we'll discuss that more later. But ammonia is one. This is here. We learned to draw this. Water okay, can act as, like we said, an acid or a base. Hydroxides are also um, pretty strong bases, so sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, magnesium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, so these are also bases. And the active component, of course, is we know that if we break down an AOH, it becomes Na+. Plus. If we look at the two ions, this is what we get. So this is our active component of the base. That's what makes it, it basic there, is that hydroxide. Okay? So this is just a, sort of an overview. So if you are a little confused, not real sure exactly what's going on, then um, finish watching this series of videos because we will next talk about more about the reaction, exactly what's going on. So I showed you just sort of a simple kind of look of it here where the acid donates a proton to the base and forms a bond. Okay, so this is very important, but we're going to look at this in much more detail. This was just to give you um, some basics and start to recognize these acids and bases. All right, thank you.